Father, in the name of Jesus, over someone's life and over someone's destiny, I speak to you standing upon the grace of God's servant here, in addition to the many vessels that have been here, in the name that is above all names. First, let me start it this way. Every force that has sat on your destiny and your glory and will not allow you blossom, Maraka Bakatusiata. We dislodge those forces now. We dislodge those forces now. We dislodge those forces now. Hey, the Bible says, By you, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. I place grace upon your life. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. I prophesy over your destiny. Run like Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahab in the name of Jesus. Run like Elijah. Ten years in one year. One year in one month. I prophesy to you. Ten years in one year. I shift you by prophecy. Enter a new season. 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 Listen. Please hear me. You are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value. You are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value. The reason why we honor global brands today is because there are enough men who have attested to the fact that those brands are valuable enough. You are as valuable as the presence of the people who attest to your value. They cannot reward you if they do not know you are there. Publicity is first a spiritual matter. There are aids, social media and the rest. But there is a hear ye him anointing. And if that grace is not on you, you can do all you can and nobody will hear you. Is someone ready to carry that grace? The grace that God has placed on his servant, placed on the men and the women of God here that will cause the nations even the ends of the earth to hear you for as many who will shout amen and believe this carry that grace now for your products carry that grace now for your vision carry that grace now for your ministry carry that grace now son of man what seest thou I see four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judea, against in the name of Jesus, every horn that has risen to shut your voice, to shut your relevance, so that you will not be heard. We bury those voices now. We bury those horns now. I say it again, the transforming church, we bury those voices now. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. I'm wrapping up. Something is resting on your life. Ragada belege baranto shabras, kraba semelem baras kabarash, shavragada balaga da vragada belegeta, kraba kata barakata branda kabarakata, skapa rakata brasa kata belex, rakata belento shobrakete, rakata belege parus kabradesh, ebraka parato brade ke belege parus yata. Hallelujah. I'm led in my spirit to speak over two areas and then we are done can I pray for your finances ladies and gentlemen please listen to me this finance thing bar this finance thing if God does not help you you will sit down one day and cry like a baby no matter how old you are did you hear what I said 
You will not cry because you don't have food to eat. You will cry because you are watching prophecy limited by lack of resources. There are many books today that would have blessed the nation stirring revivals. Money stopped that move. There are many apostolic and prophetic voices, evangelical pastoral voices that should be heralding his message to the nations, but they are incapacitated by resources. You want to see attack? Let the grace for wealth start coming close to you. You will see more attack in your life. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Please hear me. I'm saying this because for someone, if you don't get angry with lack, you may sit down and have visions all you can and yet you will go and meet the Lord you will not do one tenth of what he has told you to do I'm wrapping up Reverend Sam when God called me I listened to late Pat Robertson 700 club and he prayed a prayer as a young man he said when God called him naive not knowing many things he said Lord give me three things number one give me wisdom number two give me favor number three give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit I took out time to pray that prayer and to study them then when I came to the subject of favor I saw that naturally speaking I did not have any advantage that I could lean on and I listened to Dr. Mike Modok may God bless him bless him thankfully we still have him alive this man spoke about favor and I began to learn certain things. I took one month to pray. And I said, God, don't send me with a message alone. I said, Lord, you have to help me and show me. Show me your help, even in this area. You have given me an apostolic call. It is an expensive call. Financially expensive. Not just attacks from the spirit. Even if nobody attacks you, you will still not move forward. If you don't have resources. Did you hear what I said? Thankfully, I was so honored to have Reverend Sam with us at Manchester last year. It was a surprise, just like Pastor Jerry was saying. I mean, he's not just done that to Pastor Jerry. I think he's done that to almost everyone within his circle. That sacrifice. He was over at Manchester. And the Lord gives us an instruction to put something at the largest indoor arena. And he said, not collect offering. There's nothing wrong with free. And then... To pay, to, I mean, to, to feed all the workers. Over 2,000, 2,500 people. To feed them. And he said, don't collect offering. Don't make one mention. I said, God, but giving is one of the ways people rise. He said, no, there is a narrative about church within the European space that I want to use this conference to correct. Obedience is hard when you are poor. You believe whatever you want to believe. I will tell you this as, as sincere and as modest as I can be. I'm saying that because your story is about to change. Let me tell you this. There are many visions today. By God's prophetic hand upon your life, you are supposed to have gone far. There are younger ministers, younger apostolic and prophetic voices that are rising, but you are incapacitated. The problem is not lack of grace. You have the content, you are disciplined, you have character, people of consecration, but you are pegged in one place. Right now, the unbelieving community have bought O2 Arena in UK. They bought Excel and they banned Christian activities there completely. While that is happening, we are here praying in tongues and that is good. But very soon, they will buy up everything and push us out. You see, let me tell you the truth. You must adopt, you see. Jesus the model had a treasurer and he did not shy away from the issue of finances. There are times, there were times when they came to embarrass him. And they said, you claim to be a preacher of righteousness, but you are wanting in the area of finances. He didn't argue. He got the money and showed us from that example how to enjoy peace in life. To give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. There are things that belong to Caesar. The moment you are serving God, Caesar will come to embarrass you. Embarrass your integrity. 
and say you are preaching, you are calling, you've not paid your tax. You know, preparing for a conference in UK and Canada, Reverend Sam, you know this better than all of us. I mean, you cannot imagine the things you have to pay for. Insurance, seats, car park. Huh? Once you are gathering a crowd in excess of 10,000 uh, 10, people, there are certain, oh dear. By the time they are done with you, you will go back for a retreat and ask whether God really sent you. I mean what I'm saying. We exhausted the doors that were open for Canada and we had to now get another 5,000 overflow. And once we did, they had to renegotiate the contract as if the first one was null and void. Ah, but in Nigeria, they can say, okay, since you have done this, love Nigeria, oh, it's not that bad. We are still kind. The kind of help that is needed for you to go forward. I'm speaking to a businessman. I'm speaking to someone in ministry. The kind of help that only God can bring to men. Honestly, I prophesy to you here on this altar, beginning from now and the next 90 days, if you have the faith to believe, write it down and believe. Begin to enjoy tremendous supplies. Tremendous supplies. I prophesy to you tremendous supplies. I place prophetic words upon your head. Let helpers arise. Let financiers arise. Let favor conduits arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid you from begging and borrowing. Finances will not limit your becoming. Finances will not limit your rising. Finances will not limit your thriving. You will lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. Reverend Sam, will you lend me one minute to speak over those in debt? I'm hearing in my spirit debt. Debt like owing. There are some of you who are neck deep in troubles. There are preachers you are behind. And if God does not help you, you will plunge into depression. Every time people got into debt, it was not business that brought them out. It was prophecy. Whether it's lack of food in Samaria or the axe head that fell, alas, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought them out. I want to speak to someone. Whether it is personal debt, I've been in debt before. I know the inconvenience that happened. There are people who are not sick, but the trouble on their head it's better to even be sick. Hallelujah. Can I pray that for you? Because you need to come out of it. The embarrassment, the shame and the reproach. I tell you, being in debt will strip you of your dignity. People who have no, no audacity to talk to you will tear you down. Because you are in debt. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. Standing on the graces that are here represented. I decree and declare within the next 90 days by the wisdom of God by the mercy of God by the gift of man by the ministry of helpers by all godly means come out of debt in the name of Jesus come out of begging and borrowing in the name of Jesus you will owe no man nothing but love at least at a personal level in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. I sense in my heart that for someone else, one of the reasons why you have gotten into debt is because of greed. Please forgive me and don't feel insulted. We're wrapping up. But it's something the Lord is putting in my heart. Because there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat. Your seed has never been part of prophecy. Never been part of advancing anything kingdom. Sometimes I feel embarrassed doing this. But you see, let me tell you the truth. There is nobody who prospers in the kingdom if you are not a giver. The attacks on an unbeliever is not the same attack on you. The unbeliever can thrive with certain principles because they are largely serving Babylon. You are vowed to serve the kingdom. Hallelujah. This man you see is not just a receiver. By the mercy of God, and I apologize if it sounds arrogant, Maybe the only thing I've not given is, is, is to remove my heart and remove the life and give. 
don't just covet people's testimonies this is why sometimes as inconveniencing as it is it's good for pastors to tell people certain testimonies so they don't just pretend and assume sometimes it's inconveniencing because people mistaking them for pride I have given seeds to the millions of dollars let me tell you I'm saying it to your face don't think I'm I'm, I'm sorry I, I almost feel like I just sinned against God now but it's important to tell you don't just think that uh, no no a gentleman came like about a month ago who had been so blessed prayed for him in Ghana God expanded him. He's become a millionaire. He traveled from Ghana and came with me. Was it ten hundred thousand dollars or 150 to come and give me? And when he came, I blessed him and the Lord said, uh -uh, this is not for you. Let him take it back to Koinonia account in the U.S. and deposit it there. You think I don't know what to do with a hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Even if I don't know, I'm surrounded by too many wise people to help me know what to do with it. your heart for God though I don't want to deceive let's not just shout amen and wrap up and go away if your heart is still closed I tell you your financial gate will be closed eternally hallelujah I'm saying this to you so that you know that behind certain extraordinary results there are things that men do whatever you cannot part with deserves to rule over you one of the ways that God conquers materialism and carnality is to give you prophetic instructions to give. I always ask why God will insist that people will give. I'm not asking you to give, not necessarily. But I'm just telling you that one of the ways God prunes the dominion of material things over you is that occasionally in your life, he will give you instructions that you almost want to cast that voice away. He does it not because of the money at all. He does it because he wants what has taken his place in your heart to die. Let me pray my last prayer now. Pastor Jerry shared it very powerfully. We are just to systems and structures, but we never bend. Some of you are bent too far. You would rather leave God than to be poor. Now you've gone too far. That one is dangerous. You would rather push Jesus out of the scene to get fame. That one is dangerous. Are we together? The moment anything fights the place and the position of God in your life, you are already at a danger zone. I can tell you that. I'm praying for someone here who you have lost your love for Jesus. I know this is advanced conference, but please allow me to wrap up with this prayer. You have lost touch with spiritual things. Maybe because you really want to make money, you want fame, you want all of these things. I can tell you the truth. When you take Jesus out of the equation of your life, your life remains barren and empty. And most people just say yes mechanically, but their lives show that Jesus is far, somewhere in their space outside. God is calling us deeper. The strength of the believer is the position you have placed God in. Not just that he's in your heart. Where in your heart is he? You can be in my house and I can leave you somewhere outside. You are in my house, but you are still outside. You can be in my house and I drop you somewhere at the visitor's lounge. You are in my house. But there are inner chambers in every house and people you treasure you take them there there are many of you jesus is around your life not in your heart he's not outside but he's around somewhere joining the queue after money and fame before him god is calling you now that in all your pursuit you need to redirect your passion can i speak a word of restoration for someone you've lost your fire you've lost your spiritual texture You've lost your zeal for spiritual things. And God sent you to advance conference tonight. I agree with Reverend Sam on your behalf. In the name that is above all names, I decree. The grace that draws men to a depth of intimacy with God beyond money, beyond material things, beyond ministry, beyond fame. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Please look at me. I want you to listen. Please listen. Reverend Sam, when God made man, God made man complete. 
the, the way God responded to a complete man was the same way God responded to dry bones. All of them needed speakings on them. You would think because Adam was already complete, there would be no need to prophesy on him. The same way God spoke to a whole being, Adam, was the same way prophecy was made upon dry bones. Whether you are complete, having everything in place, or having nothing, you will never outgrow the power of prophecy. What was wrong with Adam? A man who came directly, the creativity of God himself, the artistry of God, displayed at his finest. Would you need to add anything to such a man? His mind, brain, body, biology, everything was in place. And yet God said, this man is not complete. Every factor in place. The business is well built. All the factors, advertising, branding, marketing, creativity, relational principles. But it will lie like Adam. Something is still missing. And then when he sees dry bones, he still says in the economy of heaven, it is still the same thing. How do you have to prophesy fruitfulness? For something that is already systemic to be fruitful the brain is already there the hands are already there let me tell you the truth i believe in excellence but excellence will never replace nor negate the power of prophecy there are many of you who are surprised why things are not working the truth is that everything to make it work is there you are diligent you have read the books but there is a factor and this is what by the spirit of God I want to truly speak over someone I stand with all humility and I tell you this I am a beneficiary of the power of prophecy when the hand of God comes upon your life it becomes unmistakable unmistakable help that woman unmistakable the Lord granted his servant to put this meeting even though it cuts across an array of fields and professions let me speak to you my dear business people do not allow intellect make you downplay the value of spiritual things Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 says trust in the Lord with all your heart and to lean not unto your own understanding then he says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own eyes that is the cancer that kills intelligent people wise in their own eyes you can build a boat you can build the ark but only God brings the animals the formula to attract animals from the bush on their own has not been given to any man there are certain things in your success factor your success equation that only resides with God you cannot receive it outside of him it is his presence are you ready to receive years ago when I read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently Please help two people for me now that shout under the anointing. I just saw fire just coming on two people. That fire and the Lord is telling me that that person, you have a prophetic ministry. It's a prophetic ministry. A prophetic ministry. And it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all that I command you this day. Please listen. It says that the Lord shall exalt you. Reverend Sam, when I saw that word, I was in one room. I believed it. Exalt you above all nations of the earth. Your, the call of your skin notwithstanding. Listen, it is unto you according to what you choose to believe. You listen to nonsense, you will become what you are hearing. 
Did you hear what I said? It is your responsibility to culture your perceptions for the sake of where God is taking you. The Bible says in Genesis 12 verse 3, In thee shall all nations be blessed. I am a blessing. This is what you must believe it. I am a blessing. Yes. That you shall lay up gold as dust. I believe it all. You will never listen. I wish I had time would have spoken about finances a bit. Reject poverty. Hear what I'm telling you now. Reject poverty as a personal mission. Reject it. This is not the issue of Canada. Reject it. You will never be able to do much for the kingdom if you're incapacitated. By the privilege of God's grace, we have conferences happening across the continents and I cannot tell you the monies that are needed in millions of dollars to run these things. Except you are a thief. And even if you are that, you will still suffer. What is on your head is what controls what is around your life. And I'm releasing my faith with Reverend Sam. I know we still have tomorrow. But I want to speak from the depth of my heart. This is why I came here tonight. Hallelujah. That's why I came tonight. It is from what we have received that we give. We don't know everything. At least for myself, I don't know everything. I don't have everything. But there are things we have. Believe me. Believe me. When God has given you something, you have it. It's as simple and honest and sincere as that. Father. You're on your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two. And let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you are married, please, you can hold your wife or husband, whatever, and pray. Because this is serious prayer we are going to pray now. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny. A covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, young and old, male and female, those following online. I enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny. From tonight, I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games in my life. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life, please reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. The information I need, access to light. Are you praying? 
Number three, oh God, the spirit of laziness and inertia, that spirit that refuses me from being diligent, I cost it right now in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. I challenge laziness, spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness, wanting something for nothing. I cost that spirit. Grace to be diligent. Grace to be valuable. Grace to invest in myself. Shekro toso para kama la 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 la. Rebeke teko toso para kama la 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 la. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Father, destroy premature, the appetite for premature manifestation. Manifestation when I'm not ready. Destroy that appetite from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Premature manifestation in business. Premature manifestation in ministry. Premature manifestation in family life. Premature manifestation in leadership. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to prepare like Jotham. I prepare my way before the Lord. And so I walk strong and mighty. Grace for preparation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before I pray for you. The courage, the discipline, and the diligence to take necessary action. Because some of you, the season you are in now is the season of action. You can't prepare forever. You've got to step that spirit of fear. That lack of courage, what will people say? I'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it's time to take action over my finances. It's time to take action over family life. It's time to take action in ministry. The action that will move me over my career, over my job. It's time to take action. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart. I want you to believe it. God sees my heart whom I serve. And God knows that my greatest desire, listen, my greatest desire, I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar, shining while the rest are helplessly. Everybody can shine. It will not kill the honor of the leader. If you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit-filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. 
You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you are a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare. I am still preparing. But the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges. I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it leaves your life this night and forever. Some of you, the spirit of slumber and gluttony, food and sleep that is robbing your destiny, be free from it this night. Some of you, inferiority complex, the, the pressure to look successful, the pressure to belong, is making you to do a lot of things. You've done too many foolish things. The change comes for you now. Some of us, the pressure of association. I want to become like my friends, my contemporaries. That, that pressure to, to fit in a group that is destroying you. I command that pressure to leave you right now. For some of you, the embarrassment to start again. The embarrassment to start again. After life has whipped you, your business may have failed, your ministry may have failed, your career may have failed, you, um, you applied for a job, you try to ask a lady out. The, the, the courage in the name of Jesus, I declare that grace for you again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. May you begin to access deeper levels of revelation. May God lead you to the books. May God lead you to the messages. May God lead you to the conferences. Where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns I pray that the light of God's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books God used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again The culture, listen, the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far, I release grace for you to continue it. Some of you, the prayer life that brought you this far, you have left it now. The word study life, the humility that brought you this far, you have left it. The sense of honor for authority that brought you this far, you have left it. Please, whatever you have left, that you should not leave. I command, get back to it in the name of Jesus. Number one, for most of us, over 95% of us, a mistake has already been made in our foundation. I hope you know. 
some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind schedule why should you be roaming up and down in broad daylight you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane gisting and then they come to someone else's house how are you i was just strolling are you free and then they are offended when you say you are not free everybody say i'm going somewhere say it i'm going somewhere and now is the season of preparation i will prepare you want to be a millionaire let me see the preparation let me see the preparation show me the character traits you are building that will qualify god to grant you access to such wealth you want to be an extraordinary leader show me those you are receiving mentorship from. you are moving around not doing anything ladies hear me don't be under pressure the next thing in your life after school is not just marriage thank god for marriage but build yourself focus on preparation than manifestation you are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for preparation preparation settle down prepare lord you said you are going to give me the nations work on my character let me become an exceptional man of god lord at this small level of ministry they are already criticizing me i can imagine the criticisms on great men like papa oyedeko and adeboye lord build me you have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth can i survive the criticism that takes that that having that kind of anointing will bring don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they touch something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people you want to die ask moses moses the meekest man on earth he was angry and about to kill himself god said calm down that's how ministry is have you ever gone to god for prayer and god said no that's how it is so i hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, hey. a very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade Aye! after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God. Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life nothing worked and then you say that i'm four years that means there's hope for me that means it's not unusual it's not like i don't have faith let's continue going you study about a man who built his conglomerates he will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed it was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you and you say i just built three and they failed ah there's hope for me you are learning preparation is giving you strength a time will come they look at you and they say you claim to be a man of god's wife look at your husband his mouth is looking dry you are not feeding him and you say oh, but husband am i not feeding you you didn't prepare because if you prepared you would have studied other men of god's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing 
you see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They said they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, Do you know Apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, Apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name. And then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort God is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyeriko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh, man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I am complaining. In 91, we were owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had on to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should reject it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this lad you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god Fear is as a result of ignorance and is partly a product of not preparing. You have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others. Somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today. Because if you buy their materials and study their lives, you will learn their pain. Koinonia was not built in a day. Many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care. All you know is that you are enjoying the workers' dinner. 
and it's free, paid for. Just dress well and come. And say, I like Koinonia. I like a ministry that takes care of us like this. There was a story. There was a story behind it. Preparation. You learn the principles of the kingdom. Preparation. That's the time of trial and error. Please hear me. That's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom. Like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door. You will use wrong keys. You will use wrong keys. It's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works. So God will keep building you. You will read the books. You will listen to the messages. Then one day you and God will go on small IT. Somebody will now say, please, Pastor Femi, can you just pray for our little group? And he say, ah, me? I mean, you are even calling me pastor. And then on that day, you will pray. Some things will happen, others will not happen. You will first go with confidence. You are fasted, dry. It's even dry, you went for the meeting. And then you go there, before you start preaching, somebody is already shouting. And you are like, eh? That means this is easy. Then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall. And I say, what's the confusion? I didn't lay hands on anybody. Somebody was shouting. The ones I now in direct contact with the anointing. So, preparation. You now go back. In one message you are hearing, you will hear a mystery that explains that operation. Say, ah, this is what I did wrong. You have learned. You are learning. You are learning. Are we together? You are learning about finances. God told you you will be a multi-millionaire CEO. All that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is 100,000. And you are working. One day God will give you IT. Somebody will just send you 400,000 and say, please, can you keep it for me for two weeks? And you find out your body is shaking, you can't sleep. You will get up, you are moving up and down. You say, ah, should I touch this money and pay back quickly? You see a revelation that you are not qualified. You are beginning to see the effect of money. Then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit. It's not just notes. It can do something to you. And you are now thinking, 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep. What will happen if 200 million is in my account? Then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down. He's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water. It took discipline to conquer that. What are you, what are you ignoring by refusing preparation? Is God speaking to someone? You are preparing. You want to be a good wife. In the process of preparation, you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife, she will now say, God told me. When God told me, my husband did not yet know. And God was sending me to women to go and cook with them. And you say, ah, the Holy Spirit will tell you now, go and do likewise. You will now say, ah, Auntie Shade, please, can I come to your house just to help you? And while you are washing place, you are asking her questions. And she's answering, what happens when a great man is angry? As a good wife, how do you treat, if your husband is a public figure, how do you shield him? You are not learning. You are only saying this brother, God has been speaking. You are not seeing me. He would never see you. Because God is not a wicked God to carry his servant laboring and just give you. No. You prepare. You prepare. Say amen. Stop claiming things carelessly. Sit down and prepare. And before you know it, you will see them in your hands. I respect people who are mighty, yet understand the power of preparation. There are people you see in this koinonia, mighty men and women in the spirit. Very mighty. You just see them quiet. Some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them. They are prayer like fire. Their word like fire. The maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon. Nobody even knows them. They are quiet. God is preparing them. One day you will just see God will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from? Are you joking? Nobody comes from nowhere. People are preparing quietly. You are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing. But you are not prepared. I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. 
and I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke pros kebariata lakoto superhaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God, God is increasing us in ministry. But right now, I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things. But I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And you are a good husband? You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week. And everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches. And it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enenche running six services every Sunday. Two services every week. Intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning. Find out there is a system. There is a system. Otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say. But I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon. But will it be effective? Are we together? What do you not know? I'm drawing you to a point. Your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere. Then I began to study. I got Bishop Oede Ko's book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got that word, that Hayward Mills book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela's books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit to... I'm now calling, I say, it's apostle, it's true, apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I will now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out, you are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two. Because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad. Until I read a man of God's book that delivered me. Now it can ring. If it's an emergency, call the police. Yeah. People would threaten me and say, man of God, pride, pride. You've not gotten anywhere. You used to respond to us before. You even used to send us recharge card. But now you are, you are getting arrogant. I will feel so bad. I'll say, but God, please search my heart. 
until I found out that that's how people are. It's not like they are just becoming it for me. They are like that everywhere. I just said, ah, please, go to bed. Ah, somebody's already gaining wisdom. They are gaining wisdom. So when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing. You say, why does everybody hate me? No, you are not the only one. It's like that. You are just discovering it. You are just discovering it. I don't know why everybody talks about me. Everybody, is there something wrong? Ah, if, if you are looking at your legs, you will cut two of your legs. Because there are too many people who can talk. Ah, God is giving us wisdom. Preparation. 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 There are some of us married people. People come to your house. You are under pressure to cook for them. And give them everything. Because let, let them not say we are not good. Let them say who. Oh. Let them say. Because you will find lousy people. They will come to your house. Is there pepper soup in this house? You will think they are joking. They really mean it. You will rush. Go to the market. Buy, buy cow. You think it's just a joke. You are not learning to grow up. You need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that. Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, oh, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there is something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What will they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, Wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say Amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom, generally. As regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. You need it. Study on finances. Don't just be a money monger. Don't just be a hustler. Don't just be obsessed about money and business. Understand the system. Understand how this thing works. Understand the challenges, the vicissitudes that surround it. Are we together? Number four. The last thing you must understand is people and relationships. People and relationships. 
brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked Bishop Oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of god you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very cunning people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships Number three, the last point, action. The last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action. The power of action. So number one is an encounter with Jesus. Number two is the power of preparation. Number three is action. The power of sustained action. Now by action, I don't just mean movement. Action means the relevant steps that you take. Action takes courage. Write it down. When you are about to take action over your life, your business, your ministry, it takes courage to act. Brothers and sisters, there are things you are going to be doing in your life, you will be the first person to do it in your entire family. It takes, action. It takes courage. Joshua chapter 1, it said, Be strong. And of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear I was I was talking with, I can't remember who I was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and I told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as, it is, as the presence of a demon spirit. You cast that one out. God has not given us that spirit of fear. But every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary, that, that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear. It's not unusual. There are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation. But action, action, are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail, people rally around them. Are you sure it's God? And they destroy people's destinies. How many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches? How many great destinies? There are people who, who, left, who left certain precious jobs that God gave them. 
simply because of an advice. If they are shouting at you like that, is it worth it? And then you leave it and now you are suffering. Are we together? Number three, action requires a system. Now, this is very important. You don't just act carelessly. You act based on a system. You build a system. You build a system around your action. For instance, when it's now time for you, God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time. You now sit down. There, there is a system. You can start a prayer group, a prayer fellowship. As God is bringing people, they are getting healed. They are getting blessed. God is lifting you. God is bringing people into your life. Most of the people God is bringing are not your members. Stop calling them your members and sons and daughters. They are your leaders in the making. Are we together? God never sends members. He sends leaders. They will come as drunkards. They will come as troublemakers. Your assignment is to prove your apostleship. Make them become what you have seen in the vision. They will not come ready made. Action. You must build a system around it. We had a system like that when he and I was starting. We would get people born again. There was a system. You got filled with the Holy Spirit and then we were praying. And so, when people got born again in one week, they were already on fire. A system around your business. You may now say, okay, let me now build a system. I separate business money from my personal finances. Maybe I open an account for business. I need to be serious now. Not that any money that comes is for the eating. You don't know which one is for your shop, which one is for you. So you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere. No, no. So I remember 100,000 enter. Why is there 60,000? You ate it. It's your account. System. All the great empires in the world, all the great destinies that you see, the uncommon lives in ministry, in politics, in influence, in any area of life, were built this way. This is the way people become great. They have an encounter with Jesus. That encounter brings them to a submission to his values. And the next thing, they, they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family. Are, are you getting the progression now? This so that when you get people born again, you know what to do with them. When people have an encounter with Jesus, the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under, the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. He said in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. Just like you are seated now, now you are hearing this. You are taking steps based on what I'm teaching. You will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what I'm saying, you will not ignore it. As you go back, it will burn like fire in your spirit. You will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it. Are we together now? And you begin to see your life rise. You begin to see yourself improve. Then you can know that I'm going to be a good man. Not just because I think I'm good. I have studied the system that makes men good. Then I know I'm going to be a blessed man. Not just because I hate poverty. I've studied the system. I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed. Not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself. No, 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 no. I've understood the system. At that point, you can look at life and smile. It's called mastery. You can rise to a point where you look at life and smile. And know that I have a great destiny. I have a great destiny. And you look at your life after 20, 30 years. And it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact. On Eagle's Wings, a book written by Bishop David Oedeko, I think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of Living Faith then or so, I looked at everything, the progression, on how he started. And I said, this is it. Consistent. I have studied many great men of God. That's how they started. Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now. There was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? 
Oh, they fasted. They prayed. They met together as leaders. They readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Ie Adeboe, there was a time redeemed, was doing well, but it was taunted. And God told him that redeemed needed to get to all the nations. But as it were, redeemed could not cross certain cultures. It could not go beyond the south. And he went to the Lord. And then the Lord gave him a formula. He gave him a secret. Let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership, you must have respect for people's culture and ideology. It's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture. Kingdom culture, yes. But your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that and then you see another redeemed branch youthful another redeemed branch still you know holding on to certain values he just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it but then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere festival of life in uk is as if i mean you see them everywhere there france everywhere redeemed because of that secret you can now look at that. Why is my church not growing? Ah, and God opens your eyes through that light. And you now see it. Oh, the reason why my church is not growing is because um, I, I, I hold on to my values, but probably I, I impose every value, both spiritual, cultural, sociological on people. And that value is restraining people. That may be just the key you need to adjust. And then all of a sudden, you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say, this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen, when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. You redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say, what am I doing with my life? This is not the way it's supposed to work. You have been joking around your destiny. You are getting old. Things are not working. There is nothing working in your life. Finances, you don't know anything about it. Fatherhood, you don't know anything about it. That sense of maturity, leadership, you've not built anything. Time is going. You have to give yourself a sense of urgency. A day will come, God will demand accountability. For the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. While it is day, for the night cometh. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. You want to become a great man of God. You don't know the Bible. You're going to crash land. You will be tired. Your members will be weary. They will leave your church and go somewhere else. Simply because you do not have the word. You are not instant in season. He tapped Elijah and said, Eat for the journey is far. I want to round up. Are you preparing? 
are you preparing for your life sister are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage brother do you want to marry by fire by force or are you preparing marriage means a wife marriage means children marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws have you positioned your spirit to manage it marriage means leadership i want to start a business ceo ceo of what have you studied it i want to become a great man of god i want to be president and founder or geo all that one is stories uneasy lies the head that wears the crown are we together listen I made a decision years ago today now makes it um, not today but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I've been working with God I've been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost there were many other things that had happened before that time but I made up my mind I said from today I will not be irresponsible from today I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing. Redeem the time. Please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense early in the morning you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound bros how are you day then please please don't, what, what is that shout please i'm happy today's a glorious day take it easy bros you don't cook you don't do this just speaking tell him please i plan to be a leader take it easy all these your vulgar statements and the rest i appreciate you but take it easy don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do no you begin to dress well you begin to be serious about your life are we together now yeah actions that reflect your destiny you stop excessively spending money anyhow these are action steps that some of you need to take make up your mind that from today no fake life i'm not ashamed if all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Enche, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well dress well you don't look irresponsible please i'm challenging us we are going to pray but i need to be sincere with you you look well you dress smart you start learning certain ethics when you are going before the presence of a great man you don't look foolish you destroy yourself now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time there are some of you here brothers you don't have one good suit one good suit you can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them 
you don't talk like a fool, speak everything and no, 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 no. You act like you are preparing to get married. There are some of you, I see you, you are still acting like children, although you are matured. You begin to act responsibly. You see someone's child falling down, you create a sense of responsibility. Oh, let me help this person. You are taking action that is opening doors for you. You see a man that is anointed, you don't just stand, let's see what he say. Pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say? No. The law of honor. See, there is a way you look at someone, you know he has grown up. You know he has grown up. Are we together? Let's take steps for our destiny. You may not like what I'm teaching you tonight, but just like others who are saying thank you now, you will say thank you tomorrow. I guarantee you. You may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you, I'm challenging you. Listen, there are some of you, especially ladies, because you are very beautiful. Your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you. So there's nobody to really tell you the truth. My name is Joshua Selman. I'm telling you, you have to settle down and be serious with your life. You cannot float around a destiny full of flattery. Somebody has got to tell you this is wrong, this is right. The person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these, these irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how cheerful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, Ah, Apostle, you are welcome. May his present. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil you. Say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind. That I will fulfill destiny. Say it again from today. I make up my mind. That I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes. And then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that. Show me your association. And I show you your true values. Show me your association. Whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school. It was your chief... Um, 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 your, your best man <laughs> Sam is love you God I want to say cheap price mate. praise God all this solidarity to wrong friends you've got to make up your mind you see I've been saying this thing do you know some of us if only you can leave your bad friends your journey to a good life starts especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love God but the moment you meet them, they come with their wrong ideologies. And then they force you to have to believe it. You just came back from church and now you are making up your mind, I will be responsible. And someone goes, hey, this day, oh, ladies, can I sit down? You know that's what you just repented of. But because of the presence of that friend, he said, Todd, just tell me. And you now keep listening. Before you know it, you go back to your vomit again. May God deliver you this night. The courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny. See, I don't know what is it. This our ego thing. 
is what we have refused to take out of the way. If I tell this person, sorry, you are interrupting my destiny, they will feel bad. They will criticize me. So what? So what? Make up your mind. Are we together? Make up your mind. This night, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, make up your mind and say things will change. I pray that you will really change. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will really change. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many other things we need to change about. Some of you have up to 20 relationships. Consciously, you don't care. To you, it's a symbol that you are a fine girl. Say, do you know all these guys are dying? I guarantee you, none of them will marry you. For you to be that careless with your life, they will ask you out. But when they are ready to marry, they will come to church. The brother will repent and dress well. And come and look for a quiet lady who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe, they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow. And by that time, they will not be ready to marry you. They will marry people younger than you. Don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. I uh, will meet and I will tell you, no, no, you are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry, by God's grace, you belong to a ministry that God has helped. These are the things that we do. They are not what we are saying. They are things that we do. He said, that which you have seen me do among many witnesses, do also. Do also. Be serious with your life. I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping. Sleeping, snoring. Any time of the day, I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Precious and God bless you. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus' advice. He said, men ought always to pray and not to fret. Don't forget that the fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There is no time. There is no excuse to prayer. Pray at all time. Pray from wherever you are. Don't give up in the place of prayer. Hold on to the horns of the altar. Ensure you see that the spoken word of God in your life becomes your reality day and night. See to it that Jesus reigns in your altar of prayer and there is always sufficient fire burning upon your altar of intimacy with the Lord. That is one place you shouldn't joke with. That is one place you shouldn't give up on. No matter what is coming your way, no matter the challenges, no matter what the devil is posing to your life, no matter what is coming as an obstacle to ensure that you do not pray, men ought always to pray. It is in praying we conquer. It is in praying we walk. It is in praying we gain victory. It is in praying we become what God said we would be. Don't forget, do not stop praying. Pray at all times. Pray in all season. And even tonight, we keep praying. Do well also to subscribe on this platform, Reflector Hub TV. And as you've heard the word of the Lord via his servant, Apostle Jesus Selman, do ensure you engage them with five and prayer. Share this video and hit the notification bell. See you in our next video. We love you so much and God bless you.